So when I first switched to Emacs from Vim, I got a lot of questions asking me how I get my day-to-day -day workflow done. A lot of people say questions like, I'm not able to compile code, I don't really know a good workflow, or using the command line is just what I know and I don't know how I could switch away from it. And a lot of uh, questions and statements like that that kind of made me interested in talking a bit about my workflow with Emacs. So I decided to make this video just introducing you guys to some of the concepts, some of the tools, some of the functions that I use day to day with Emacs to try and give you guys a better idea of kind of what a possible workflow is. There are literally millions of ways that you could use Emacs. This is just how I personally use it. Anyways, without any more delays, let's get into it. So first off, when I start up Emacs, I have the actual server start up as well. Um, so that way I can actually take advantage of Emacs's client server architecture. Once I open Emacs once, I can basically open them again um, very quickly, um, faster than a lot of terminals can open up. Because of that, I can also have uh, shared buffers between my windows. That takes up a lot of my window management. I also use splits pretty heavily. So just like this, I can switch back and forth between splits. And I actually have that integrated into my window manager. I'll post my configuration for that down in the description if you guys are interested. Now, probably the biggest thing for people coming from Vim to Emacs is the question of how does my command line workflow go? Um, I'm really used to using the command line. I'm used to opening up a ton of terminals and just running a command in those, then putting them off to the side and ignoring them for a bit. Now, luckily the workflow actually doesn't change too much. If you're just running like simple commands, you can actually do a ton of that just from Emacs without any real thought. A good example of one that I run all the time is updating my distribution. Now for me, all I would do is I would do Alt Shift and the and symbol, and this allows me to run an asynchronous command. Now I could do yay dash syyu, enter, and it will run the command just down here. If I wanted it to maybe be a bit bigger, I can make it a bit larger. I can just simply hit enter, and it will run my update and everything, which is pretty helpful. It's also worth noting that this gives you a dumb terminal, so you do get access to a bit of extra functionality. A good example of this is being able to move around just like you would any other buffer um, without having to enter some special mode, and you can also just type stuff and it will treat it like normal. Obviously, since this is running an update, that's not really going to do too much for me. Now, the nice thing about this is that since I use this plugin or package popper, it basically allows me to have this kind of act like a um, pop-up terminal. So a good example is I could do just one key binding, hide it, pop it back up, and I can have multiple of these if I wanted to. And I use that for managing a lot of my buffers that I kind of just want to use for a quick little one-off command or something like that. Now, when I really need a terminal, often I will just open up a terminal but sometimes um, I'm not as much of a fan of this workflow, but I know a lot of people are. You could use vterm and you get a fully functional terminal and you could do, uh, I don't know, vim. There you go. And you can run NeoVim inside of Emacs if you really wanted to do that, but uh, not really necessary for most people. And it's actually pretty surprisingly fast, about as fast as you would expect any integrated terminal in a text editor to be. Now, usually when it comes to normal programming, a lot of stuff that I end up doing is running a command. Maybe I want to have like a session, for example, if I'm working on a node project, so I'd have stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, but sometimes that just is how it is. That's how jobs work. Uh, and so sometimes you have to work with node and sometimes you want to use NVM and have a consistent terminal session going. And then what I tend to use is I tend to use a shell. So I'll run the command shell and this will give me a simple um, kind of like a simple dumbed down shell. It still gives me the same key bindings I'm used to in Emacs. So if I did LS, I could kind of jump around just like normal. And it allows me to get the same completion. So if I want to do cat tm, and I could just hit alt slash, and I could get completion. So tmp.c alt tab, um, and that will try and complete it. I also obviously have a completion coming from Corfu, which is my completion engine, basically what I use for code completion. But you can also kind of like copy stuff around too if you wanted to. And you get like history, backward searches. Uh, I don't really know what uh, commands I ran recently. Apparently I ran reboot somewhere recently. Now, probably the big fear that a lot of people have with using something like this is if they called something like man. And then normally you would get an interface with less, but you can actually basically add an environment variable to tell it to use cat instead of less. And then as a result, it gives you a nice little way to avoid having less because unfortunately less doesn't really work in shell. You'd have to use vterm to have that full terminal functionality. But who really needs less when you have your entire text editor to uh, be able to do this? Obviously, this is a, in my opinion, better option than using using less, it opens about as fast and everything like that. So not much reason to use less in my mind. And also there's already a man command in Emacs, but this was just a simple example. 
Now, something worth noting is that there is a package out there called with editor, I believe it's called, which basically it's used in Magit, which is a Git client for Emacs. So by default, your alt uh, your old amber and symbol uh, won't actually call this. It will run async shell command, but I have it bound to with editor async shell command. Uh, so that way I can do something like git commit and then hit enter. Uh, yeah, let's open that in a new buffer and it will actually uh, let me edit this in Emacs. So updated uh, templates, I guess. There we go. Um, so as you can see, it actually works pretty well and you get a nice little way to kind of integrate well with the uh, text editor when you run a command. Um, this can be done with pretty much anything that calls your text editor. Right now on to note taking. So a lot of times when I am programming uh, or really getting any of my work done, a lot of times I'll have a thought or an idea and I want to um, capture that in a note. Now what I used to do is I would use like the notes app on my phone, but that's not very helpful because then you kind of lose a lot of functionality. You don't have access to it on your computer. You can't jump from that to a line of code that's I don't know, kind of crazy. I've never really heard of people doing that um, with a lot of their note taking, but that's how I like to do a lot of my stuff. So if say, for example, I'm editing my configuration and I think of a pretty clever idea, then I would run the command or the key binding control C C to get a capture interface. And this will give me a bunch of options. Um, so let's just do C for cool thing. And then this line was pretty cool and then control C, control C, and that will store that in my notes um, under this file right here. And if I just do control U, control C, C, um, and then do C to cool, it will actually take us to it. And this, uh, so this is the little part that we added and we can actually do control C, control O to kind of jump to that line in the code. Um, it will take us to the exact line that we took that note at. Um, and you can expand this pretty far. In fact, I have that set up with Qt Browser, um, as well as recently I set that up with Nixt. And just for reference, you can actually uh, take this a little farther. So while right now I'm just able to do capturing from within Emacs, I can actually do capturing from outside of Emacs. So let's highlight this text and I have this set up myself and you can do Control C, Control C, and it will actually give you a little prompt. Uh, so let's do to do this time, hit enter, and then it will actually uh, capture it and it takes the text that we had highlighted uh, and allows me to give it a name. And then I can go ahead and save that and it's added to my notes, just like that. Very easy to integrate with other tools um, using something called the org protocol. You can kind of integrate this into um, more normal browsers as well. There might be something like that out for a similar program using a plugin. Uh, this is actually relatively straightforward with Emacs. Now, while this may seem really simple, I actually do this quite a lot, especially when I want to kind of think through a problem. A lot of times, uh, what you'll end up doing when you're working on a big project is you'll have a question for somebody. Um, and before I actually ask them the question, what I try to do is ask it myself. So I'll write down as much information as I can. So a good idea would be to um, capture and then it would be knowledge. It's okay. And I would type in thing, right, a bit of a description about what's going wrong. And then I would write out word for word what my problem is as if I was going to tell it to someone. And then this actually allows me to uh, come up with the solution myself. It's what's known as a rubber ducky principle. A lot of programmers and people in the world uh, use this to help them come up with solutions to problems. Now, something I tend to do a lot as well is I'll be working on this project. I'll be documenting everything that's happening. So project. So yeah, I've got all these topics and I can actually go ahead and send these off as an email really easily doing org mime subtree HTML eyes, so that way I could actually have this in a whole buffer, but I guess in this case I could do this with the whole buffer, but we'll just do this with the subtree. Hit enter and then I hit P for my personal and I can actually get this turned into HTML and send this as a message to somebody. Um, this is really useful. I used this a bunch um, at my previous job. I actually sent this a couple times to coworkers so they had an idea of what I was working on. Now next up is compiling code. Compiling code is something that a lot of people have issues with for quite a while and the, probably the best way to get started with it is actually pretty straightforward. What I'll do is I can go ahead and compile it using the compile command. And so when I enter that, it will give you an option to enter in what the command you want to use to compile is. Uh, by default, it uses make, but you can pre-configure this for different file types. In addition, you can also have uh, really clever tricks, which I like to do. For example, if I go to my uh, dwm config.h, at the very top here, I actually have this command right here. And so this little section at the top actually does uh, makes this that way when I do compile. 
and enter, it will actually uh, enter this command up here. Um, and I use this for a lot of config files where you need to like run a command after you've changed the config. Uh, so I can just do control X, control M, and it will compile my program. Um, so there we go. And so it's updated my DWM uh, installation, which is pretty cool. A good example of what I was talking about was doing the .x resources uh, right here. I have a little command, and so if I did compile, it will actually uh, give me the command. So if I changed it and ran that compile command, it would actually update my X resources, which is uh, pretty useful. Another thing the compile command offers is a way to set environment variables. This was super useful when I had to work with Java and I had a version conflict between my language server and the actual code base. Um, instead of having to go through a lot of the headache of trying to get the language server to work with a different version of Java, I know it's possible, I just haven't really put in the time to figure out how to do it. Uh, this gave me a way to basically just whenever I wanted to compile, change the version of Java I was using, which is super helpful. Now, as you guys may have noticed, um, when I went to that C file, um, I got a lot of code hinting, and this is all done using LSP mode. Um, up until very recently, I was using eglot, but uh, recently I've just started using LSP mode um, just due to like a few uh, annoyances. Probably the biggest one was snippets. While I know a lot of people like to use Yas snippet, I actually use uh, Tempel, 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 Tempel. It's just Tempel, I guess. Um, but basically how they would work is it's basically a way to do templates. And so uh, you could like type in a command or sorry, like a, like you do if, and then alt tab, and that will give me uh, a nice little snippet here. And I have to predefine these. I know this is one of the losses of not using Yas snippet, but I personally prefer um, this current setup. Maybe I'll do a video on this in the future, but it's not really, I won't go too far into it for this video, but I could just have a little like I equals equals 10. Uh, now, obviously I'm getting uh, coding errors just because of that, but there you go. So I could, move things around if I wanted to. Um, kind of just wanted to show off my current setup. Um, obviously right now I don't have this project configured properly, but yeah. Um, and as well, obviously, as you guys know, I use uh, Sly. I use Sly for my actual Lisp editing. So that's one, two. You guys kind of know that workflow, so I won't really bore you guys with it. Now, while I do use Discord as my main server, I actually do also use uh, Element, not quite as often, uh, just because there's a few Discord servers for school and stuff like that that I you know, frequent every once in a while and try to stay in touch with. But basically, I what I like to use is Ement. And Ement uh, basically allows me to, just one sec, let me log in really quick. Sorry about that, just didn't want to show off my password, but Ement gives me a way to kind of view a lot of my um, matrix servers. Um, so basically, a good example would be, um, let's go to my, my general chat. If I hit enter, it gives me all of the most recent messages and I can scroll upward uh, and get earlier messages. Um, and so this is nice when I want to use a matrix channel and I do often use my matrix channel when uh, sometimes since I have like a matrix bridge set up, um, it's really nice just because I can access the, the Discord server. And for those of the people that are on matrix, they don't have to worry about um, me not seeing their messages because sometimes there can be a bit of a delay. Hey guys, sorry for the sudden change of scenery. Uh, I was recording that really late at night, if you couldn't tell by the fact that I was borderline whispering. Um, so I decided to cut off the video there, hopefully you guys don't mind, and I'll be sure to come back to the topic in the future if anything were to change. Where I go, I would just like to give a big shout out to Connor G and Russell Willis for supporting me on Patreon, and finally Palatinous Car and Tall Guy Janks for supporting me on GitHub Sponsors. If you guys want to support the channel, I'd really appreciate it, uh, and you guys can go ahead and find my GitHub Sponsors and Patreon. If you guys are to pick between the two, I'd prefer GitHub Sponsors just because it uh, throws more of the money my way and it doesn't just pocket the rest of it. But anyways, I really appreciate you guys watching the video. Let me know if you have any questions or you want me to go in depth into any of these topics because I did talk about a lot of different tools and features in Emacs, so be sure to let me know. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. <music>